2024 Diamond Pro 320. Is this thing a diamond in the rough? We shall see. Well, welcome back to the YouTube channel. MFJJ here with PodiumArcher.com looking at the new Pro 320 from Diamond by Bowtech. This is a broad adjustable bow. It's the replacement for the Edge 320, which they were made for a really long time and they still have some floating in circulation, but they're going away pretty soon. The new price point for this bow is $499 for the bare bow and $599 for the package. And we'll cover what comes in the package in a minute. Uh, there's not a ton of difference between this and the 320 other than I want to say the specs are a little better. The Pro 320 does come with an orbital dampener which will help with vibration which we'll measure in a bit. But our overall draw length adjustments are 15 to 31 inches, 7 pounds to 70 pounds, 320 foot per second speed, brace of 7 and a quarter, and a 32 axle to axle, and a mass weight of 3.6 pounds. And 3.6 pounds is really light. Let's measure some of this stuff and see what we get here. Start with our axle to axle. Go from the far side of the screw to the far side of the screw here. It says 32, 30, and 31 and 7 eighths ish, something like that. Uh, let's measure our brace. Seven and a half solid, right in the center there. Let's see how long our riser is. Pivot to here. 25 inches for a 32 inch bow, not terrible. This one's probably not going to be nearly as friendly, but we'll see what our reflex looks like here. Well, two and a half is better than I thought it was going to be. It's not bad. I mean, ideally, I like to keep stuff under two, but for how much curved design there is in this, that's not horrible. Uh, let's check our physical weights. Mind you, we added an arrow rest to this. So we're probably going to get... We're going to call that a tenth to two tenths, somewhere in there. And this is weighing out at 4.2, 4 4.1, 4.2. So that'll be 3.9 without the rest. So that means they're saying that either this weight is way off or this weighs like a third of a pound. Let's try it without that on there and see how much less we get because it comes right off. That's aluminum, so that's not super heavy. I don't think that even comes off. I think that's machined in there. So now we're down to... 4.1, so I'd say this bow weighs about 3.9, so I think they're a little off on their weight there. Um, I should say a lot off on their weight because I'm not sure what else I could take off here and not weigh with it. Um, we're gonna show you some of the parts here that come with this bow, and then we will show you how to adjust the draw length because we haven't done it yet. And it's a very easy system. The, the intent of this is that you can buy this bow for someone who's growing in length and be able to change the length yourself. So we figure we probably ought to show you how to do that. This is the quiver that comes with it, mounts on over the sight base, pulls off detachable. Uh, this is an upgraded rest from what they used to come with. This is a, an Octagon Pro, like alu machined aluminum, windage elevation settings. Like this is actually a relatively nice rest in comparison to what they used to put on there. A basic, what do we got here? Pull this out. So machined aluminum, Octane, Machined aluminum windage and elevation on a plastic injection head and wrapped five pins with an integrated level. I mean, keep in mind folks, you're only paying $100 for all these parts. That's a pretty nice site for a $100 package, along with your octane stabilizer and your diamond wrist sling. And I thought these, yeah, I thought these came with a peep too. Is that in there? Yep. And a two-way split peep sight. For a hundred bucks, that's pretty cheap. I mean, I'm not, I'm not bragging about these are amazing parts, but for $100, that's not very much money for what you're getting here. So we have to test this at 30 inches like we test everything else. So let's throw this in the vise and we'll show you how to adjust the draw length. I'm gonna flip this over, make this easier to grab. Perfect. Okay, so here, upper cam and lower cam will both have three screws in it. And the draw lengths are actually laser etched off of that little mark right there. So right now this bow says it's set at 26. There's pins positioned for every one of these. Okay. 
Okay. So I'll need to pull out, pull it out of the pin position and move it to 30. When you get longer, it gets a little more difficult to get there because this cable sits in the way. It should somewhere in there should be about right for 30. Mm -mm. Come on. Mm. Lift this up real quick. Give me a second. Not quite. It should be that one, I think. Flip this back over. Yep, that's spot on 30 right there. And that little metal pin really helps enforce that you're in the exact spot because without that, it would really drift around. And then it really doesn't matter which screws you put back in here, which holes you go with. It's just make sure you get all three back in there. And unfortunately, no, nope, it looks like we can still get one in there. Sometimes you'll end up with the hole that lines up underneath the limb and you'll have to press the bow to get at it. But as long as you put three screws back in it, it's considered safe. So those two and that one should make it happen for us. And then whatever you do on this side, you do on that side, simple as that. Point. So I would say this bow measures out at more like 30 and a quarter or just shy of that. So a little off there, but, and that might help direct the speed a little bit, but it's still not ridiculously bad, but note to self, this bow is about a quarter inch long on the draw length. All right, Diamond Pro 320, 70 pounds, 30 inches, 350 grain arrows. So my first shot through it for feel. The cycle is actually really easy. It doesn't, it's not aggressive at all, but you know, we are talking a bit of vibration there, but I got to remember this is a $500 bow and it's a broad adjustable bow. Um, oh, I haven't set the weight yet. I'll have to do that, but we'll just shoot these three real quick. Yeah, it's, the draw cycle is really nice. I got to be honest. It is a 320 foot per second rated bow, so I would hope it would feel nice, but it's not aggressive at all. All right, let's uh, put the vibration meter on and see what we get. All right, first vibration test on the Pro 320 from Diamond with 350 grain arrows, 70 pounds, 30 inches. I did adjust this to 70 pounds after I turned the camera off to make sure it was right, so. Sixteen point five eight. Fourteen seventy one, so probably sixteen average. All right, we'll see how fast this thing is. All right, speed test, 70 pounds, 30 inches, Pro 320, 350 grain arrows. Shooting three. 306. 306. Called that, didn't I? 307. Three oh five. So an average of three oh six. All right, now we'll see what four fifties and five fifties do. All right, four hundred and fifty grains, seventy pounds, three hundred and uh, pro three twenty, seventy pounds, thirty inches, four fifties. Two seventy four. Three 
274. And this one's missing a fletch, so it might be a foot or two faster. But who knows, we'll see. 275. So 274 average. Let's see what 550s do. Two forty nine, two fifty, two fifty one. So 250 average there. Oh, 250. Okay. Speed 306. So you're 14 feet shy off of what you're saying. Now, this coming up with this number is a little tricky because that's a really slow speed, but it's a very adjustable bow. And we haven't tested anything else that's an equivalent to that. So it's hard for me to give it a fair number when I'm trying to compare like bows. But because you're 14 feet off, I'll accept 10. 14 is a lot, and it's pretty slow. I'm going to give you a 2 on the speed. Uh, weight said 3.6. It's actually 3.9. That's still very light for what that is, but with not being honest about your speed, we'll get you marked, or your weight will get you marked down pretty good with me. So I'm going to give you a, a 3, even though you're still only 3.9, which is like some of the lightest bows built. But you got to be honest about what you're putting out. ATA was within an eighth. Uh, 32 and sevens are going to be a relatively forgiving platform and design, which is good for an entry level person. I'll give you a four here. Um, you're within a, you're a quarter inch off on your brace. It's a good number, but if you're not being like relatively close to what you say you are, I'm going to mark you down a little bit. So there's a three. You're measuring a 30 inch draw length and you're a 30 and a quarter. So once again, you're going to get a three. Reflex geometry, two and a half for a bow that has 32 axle to axle and seven and a half inch brace height, actual measurement. Two and a half inches of reflex is a lot. You do not need to have that in that bow. It's not necessary. I know they're continually reusing kind of the same design of things, but I'd like to see somebody renovate and innovate in this realm. So I'm going to give you a two on that. Uh, tunability. Uh, let, me, let me grab this real quick. I don't think there is any tunability features. Uh, they have spacers, but these have very limited, limited options. These are kind of like a run what you brung, roll how it goes, move the rest a lot le left to right, which is not ideal. In comparable to other bows in this price range, there's probably not other options, but like tunability, I'm going to kind of give you a one because there's like nothing you can really do. I mean, you can move the cam a little bit, but that's it. Um, but once again, you are looking at entry level bows, so you shouldn't expect these numbers to be high because there's just not a lot. Uh, features, there's no front mount, there's no rear mount, there's no V-bar options. It does have an orbital dampener and a pivoting limb pocket, which is a relatively common thing, but when you look at entry-level bows, a lot of times they don't have that. So I'll give you a two on features because you are doing something. Uh, balance, it both feels relatively top-heavy, but not horrible. It's pretty decent. I'll give you a two on balance. Uh, your back wall, actually, for a broad adjustable bow, is pretty darn good. It does. It's relatively firm. Spongy compared to like a $1,300 bow, but it's pretty darn good for a big adjustable bow. So I'll give you a three there. The grip for being a plastic molded grip is actually pretty nice. It's relatively square edged and contoured. So you can feel where your hand is on it a little bit. It could be more edged and I'd like it a little bit more. And the draw cycle really is pretty decent for what it is. I'm gonna give you a three. I'm not gonna give you any higher than that. Um, vibration, 16 and a half. That might be the highest thing we've tested, but this is also one of the least expensive things we've tested. So I'm going to give you a three being fair. Eh, it felt like a lot. I know that tool read that. I'm going to give you a two because it does have quite a bit amount of vibration, but it is a $500 bow folks. And that's where I'm going to emphasize this number for price for what you're getting. I mean, you're getting a sub four pound bow, right? You're getting some decent specs as far as what forgiving should be. And you're coming in at under $500. I'll give you a four. If that was $499 and $399, it'd be a five all day long. And I might even have given you a five if you're like $450. But 
it's still a very fair price for what you're getting. You're not, you're not, no one's gouging a price here. They're being really fair, I think, with what you're getting personally. So let's see what we come up with here. Six, eight, 10, 15, 16 on a high score. And three, six, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, 18, 21, 21. Now, I know those are like the lowest numbers we've put on something, but this is also the most affordable thing we've ever tested. And we're trying to give you real fair comparables here. Like you shouldn't expect a $500 bow to put out a number that a $1,000 bow is putting out. There should be a difference and rightfully so. But for what you're getting and what it's putting out, it's actually very fair. And then this gives you real numbers to test against the other affordable or price point effective bows that are in the market that we will test and try to expand this format a lot more. So it makes it easier to understand the difference between $500 and $1,000 or $1,300 and why. And that should be a reflection of this test. Hopefully this helps. Comment down below on what you think of this video. I know it's we haven't done a lot of these and maybe there's a really big audience out there that we've been ignoring and we should pay more attention to. So if that's you, make a comment down below and tell me. We'll do more of this if we see a good response from this. And I think we will. I think there's a lot of you out there that are looking more in this price point that most of the other places are kind of ignoring. And I, I want you to realize that you're important to me too. It matters to me. You're new people and entry level people that don't have a ton of money to put into a bow. I wanna be able to give you the same kind of information that I've been focusing on the higher end stuff with. So hopefully that helps and hopefully this is good, but comment down below and let me know. Thanks a lot.